think that's it. We eat. We we on? Do I need to do a bit of a swing? I think we're on. Yes. Yeah. Hang on, you might get some mic bingy noises. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, there it oh. is. Bing. It is. We're back on a Friday. Back right. to normality. Back to normal. And today, well, we're recording this obviously, but you'll be hearing this on officially what is now to be known as Man Bun Monday. Yes. <laughs> it's an important day, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Because Lewis and myself are both sat in front of you sporting man buns. Mine's well, a, mine's like a, a ponytail. Is that yeah, a ponytail? Yeah, yeah, it probably is. Yeah. The samurai esque yeah. way. This Just is, the top bit and yeah. the back the back down top up. This is my first first ever ponytail. It's a big Madness. moment for me big growing moment, up. Big moment. Yeah. I, so, did, yeah. I didn't even expect it. I didn't think that I was there yet, but then Lex then there is. showed me showed me the way. The magic. Yeah. Secret tricks. So, and if you're up. not watching on YouTube, you're missing out. Yeah, you are missing, missing out, out on my uh, <laughs> ponytail virginity. Being else, taken. Also, sporting hair long enough for man buns, we give you a mental Monday high five. Ka-chink. You did it with your eyelids. With my you eyelids, know? mental, a mental high five in. Yeah. So it's like the same as if you take a mental picture. Yeah. Ka-chink. Ka-chink. <laughs> yeah it didn't work. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the news. We we just had the first barbecue of the year. We did, yeah, yeah. First barbecue, and it's an early. This yeah. is early for a barbecue, but so the weather's been great. It has been amazing. Oh my god, I've got a tan. I've oh got nice. a tan, and do you know what? I've learned. I'm gonna move this. There we go. Right. For like, obviously, we're coming back to normality now, aren't we? Mm. So it's, it's the twelfth, is it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Fingers crossed. I 12th think we're getting of April. we're getting more information on the fifth. That's gonna like guarantee what's going ahead. Yeah, but, but, knocking um, but down, hopefully maybe. the gym doors will reopen. Yeah. And that's yeah. a big day. Big day. I'm excited. Yes, I've got, I can't wait. But because of this, because we've, we're coming back to Marty, things are starting to lump on both of us, aren't they? Workload is suddenly coming back in mm. and like a big dam being opened. Yeah. Um, and I, you were saying before, you're getting a bit like just anxiety about it all just because it's starting to pile up. Yeah. Yeah. It's like um, we're saying it's it's good. Obviously, I'm fucking excited that my business gets to yeah. go back up and get to see everyone again. But then it's kind of so much for the last like 12 months. Custom to it. Yeah. yeah I, you know, we've been in lockdown for X amount of time. And although I've still been working throughout, the, the pace has definitely been slower. My... Yeah. You know, I've been able to have more lions. Like when I say lions, I'll, I'll still get up at like seven, but that's you more can, of a You can make the day time scale more yours, can't you? You can yeah. twist it and tweak it a bit more. Yeah. Because you're not having opening hours and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. You've got a lot more freedom. Yeah. And um, yeah, now starting to like have more time constraints and I'm having to do the, the multitasking or like swapping from one style of task to another like throughout the day whereas before in, you know, I was just able to like, okay, today I'm only going to focus on doing this thing yeah. and then I just get into that zone and then just churn it out whereas now I have to keep swapping which and... is terrible for us because we have that short term focus issue <laughs> yeah yeah like just getting getting into the flow state of like whatever task yeah. takes a while so then that's you just keep it. disrupting and stopping and starting and like but that's why with the weather being great I found that because I had that same thing coming, like loads of just left, right, and center stuff coming in. Right, this is coming. You ready for this? Would you like to do this? I'm like, oh, I've got my own stuff to do on side of it. So I've got like the clothing line has had a whole like U turn on it because um, I'm going to completely get not a different direction in the way it's going to look or anything, just different direction in terms of manufacture and all that kind of stuff. And so it's basically re- having to restarting with all that again, which is, you know, speed bumps. You always hit these bloody things. But that was like a frustration. And then the happiness of everything opened up and then also then all the new work coming in. So you're like, oh, it's brilliant that loss is coming, but also Jesus Christ, like people yeah. are on your back about everything. Um, and so this week we've had two great days of sun so far. Yeah. And what I found was really good was I just thought, do you know what? After three days, four days maximum, this weather's gone. Yeah. I am going to enjoy this weather because if I work and gra- like slam it through like for the next four days, and get I'll get things done. Then what am I doing? I'm sat inside a house with grey and rain and rubbish. Yeah, because well, it might actually be snowing by the time people get yeah, this. But yeah, exactly. There is snow predicted. It's that crazy. So I just <laughs> thought, and you know what? And, and I sat back and I thought, okay, if I take the next four days and just do the work that needs to be done, but then leave the rest until that Monday when things change. Yeah. Is that going to affect anything? I looked at it and I thought, no, those things that I can leave till Monday can be left until then. Yeah. So I'm not panicking, and that's what I did. I've put those, shifted them back done what needs to be done, you know, getting done what needs to be done, mm-hmm. and then everything will restart on Monday after I've had this lovely weather and made quite pace of it. And today, I was driving in the car, and I was um, I got up a little bit late because I went to bed late. 
<laughs> you know? But yeah, um, I just I had a really weird night's sleep. I kept like waking up every two or three hours. So yeah. I was really, I came downstairs, I got up early, Yeah. but then I fell asleep again downstairs. Oh, shit. Yeah, like literally just gonzoed. You know, when you're like r rocking forward and you've had two coffees and you're like, oh God, it's not working. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, so I was on the sofa, I was like, I'm going to have to have a cat nap. I'm going to have to, because otherwise this day is going to go to shit. I'm yeah. just going to kind of zombie my way through the day. So I fell back asleep again and then woke up and then I had to go pick shopping up and the, I was driving out to get the shopping and I was like, mm, I like being outside. This is nice. Sunshine. I'm out the house. Yeah. Yeah. There's other stuff I could be doing now, but, and then I literally sat there in the car and I thought, you've got three days of sunshine left. You should be making the most of every single one of these days where you can go out and do stuff. Yeah. Like I, started, I immediately thought, why, why are you not on your motorbike? Like, yeah. Why have you not got a motorbike ride planned for these days? Yeah. So, and, and I thought, and then I literally thought to myself, if you let these three days go by now, you're going to sit there on Monday and regret the fact that these three days have gone past. And in the future, anytime you see anything good coming, you ought to take that fucking time for yourself and plan something in there and get it done because yeah. these are the days we should be living for. Yeah, exactly. The, especially the type of work that you're doing where you can do a lot of stuff from the house. You don't, yeah. obviously traveling is going to be involved, but you know, make the most of the sunny days. So, 100%. You know. well, that's, a big, that's a big thing I learned this week was yeah. to yeah, make the most of those moments and just, you know, don't, fret because you can you've always got a lot of stuff on there's always stuff to do there's always stuff to do but some mm -hmm. stuff can wait so you know yeah i think like i like i work well under pressure and under a, yeah. a, like a lot of things that kind of that helps me but i think i've become so accustomed to just like this more casual pace that just the idea of it <laughs> is giving me yeah. more anxiety but once i'm like after a week and i've kind of you'll be acclimatized to, to it yeah, yeah it'll just be back to normal yeah the the one thing that i am probably a little concerned about is because you know during this last lockdown my training has been like the best it's ever been because i've had less stress i've been able to kind of i've been on top of making sure my, my, yeah. my biggest problem was always eating enough yeah um again I've, we've both been eating well this lockdown, yeah huh? yeah i've been having like breakfast lunch dinner and like something before yeah. bed which i've been cooking is, more as well yeah. rather than out of packet stuff yeah and like I'm just, I've had a few days that are getting busy and I've noticed that stuff slipping already and I'm like, shit, I can't. Yeah, but you see, this is what you have to learn and not do, isn't it? Yeah. So you've put in all this effort, mm. you've made these, and you can still do this. Yeah. It just takes a little bit more planning. So it's taken the good habits we've learned from the lockdown. I think tons of people's training has actually kind of been a bit more focused during lockdown because yeah. we've had to be smart and clever. Yeah. Like someone asked me the other day, oh, so I was filming a couple of new videos for YouTube and this is one of the jobs I was talking about was the YouTube videos. I hadn't had a video out for like two weeks now, but it's because I've been procrastinating on doing one video about this. I'm doing a video that's basically going to be titled Why You're Still Fat. Yeah. And the whole, the start of the video, the opening of the video is the reason you're still fat is your fault. Yeah. And then it goes, but let me tell you why that's a good thing. Like, yeah. and it's a whole it's a whole journey of basically what you should be ignoring, what you should be listening to, and realizing you're not any fucking different to anybody else. Like, and it's how everyone's on the same path, just different points on that path. Whereas other people would have you believe that you are completely abnormal and different to other people if you oh, I find it hard to lose weight, yeah. or if you don't look a certain way. You know, it's just the, these lazy assholes who want company in yeah. their laziness. Yeah. So it's kind of dispelling all those. It's a bit of a, just a boot up the arse. Like even if you're a little bit just trying to, if you're trying to get in stupid shape, like like extreme shape, yeah. or whether you're just trying to lose a bit of weight, it's the same fucking rules. Yeah. So it's explaining that. And um, I was taking too long to work about how to say it to be not politically correct, but to just structure it so it didn't seem like it was you being it. It's just dick. just yeah, me and a dick. I wanted it to come across with the tough love, but also with it clearly being an incentive video, not a bashing video. Yeah, of course. Which yeah. was always it, but I don't and then I thought I sat back and thought Fucking, like it was never going to come across as a bashing video because it's not a fucking bashing video, you idiot. No. Like my my tone, everything about it is nothing bashy. It's all super positive and like just reaffirming stuff you don't tell yourself enough of. Yeah. And um, so basically, I wasted time not not getting it done. So, but then I finally got it done, and I thought, but does it matter if it goes out today, Friday, or does it matter if it goes out on Monday? Yeah. It really doesn't fucking matter at this point, and that's what I mean. So then I was like, right, put it off till Monday and enjoy this fucking weekend mm. and do that. So. I think we spoke about this before how we can we both end up almost like aiming to try and get something perfect and like that gap between something being like 95 percent like even good 98 percent yeah like almost there and being perfect might take you fucking three or four times yeah. as long yeah. just to get those last few percenters like is it yeah. worth it for that like no it's in not. in our eyes what we see is perfection and in you know the someone else's yeah. eyes 
probably would never they even wouldn't, notice. Yeah, wouldn't even notice. Like in a picture, a shadow or a, bl- a glitch, like little something on the photo that I don't like, you know, yeah. or perfecting a light angle or some crap. The, the normal person just looks at it and goes, that's ah, nice photo, moves on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, it, or it does its job of showing them what they need to see. I was going to say, I'm sure the, the average, like people look at a, like a, a photo on Instagram, it's like less than a second. It's like an eighth of a second or something and that's the amount of time you've got to make an impression on yeah, somebody which is a double-edged sword because then you think okay so i've got to make this really good so that it catches the eye and makes them stop yeah um but it's the general image that will do that not these minor things yeah yeah it's uh, but you're right like th- our problem is is i had that video edited like on monday yeah but what's taken me from monday until the thursday when it was completed but it's still not completed now because I stopped on the Friday and I was debating whether to put music and underlying in it or not. Yeah. Which I'm still debating, but anyway, by the by. It um it was the on screen annotations. Yeah. So bearing in mind this is a twenty odd twenty minute video of me and I've edited it and it's jumpy and there's switches and there's angles and stuff. The longest part of it is me deciding where to put little capitalized letters and a little title screen. It's just mm. nonsense. All the stuff that is the the subject matter is all solid. You don't actually even need any of it. No, no. And so, and I believe it is. And but I still, yeah, that took me four days. And yeah. that's the two percent of a ninety eight percent completion. Do you know what I mean? It's retarded that I spent that much time on the two percent. Yeah, I was going to say, and obviously it's going to vary from different people in terms of what kind of content they consume. But looking at my recent YouTube history. None of the videos are like edited. No, you're watching to... a lot of in, in uh, what's it? Uh, what's the word? Intellectually based. Yeah, stuff yeah. Like just it, sitting and chatting about subjects. Yeah, debates. it's literally something like this. Where the someone's, yeah, 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 someone sat there talking. Watch stuff like that. I've watched a few like vlog style ones, but they're hard cuts. They're nothing too fancy, and it's more like I'm watching them because I like the people. That's so it, I'll yeah. just I'm watching. I don't give a fuck what their edits are. Like occasionally they'll put something together, which I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But I'm just. Wanted to see a bit of those are little moments. You notice it, but you don't depend on it. No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Like that. Yeah. The the quality of the edits, I would rather because I know like one of the the channels that has recently started back up that I used to follow a lot. Um, he's been putting out content, but they were notorious for being like very inconsistent. Like you'd, you'd be yeah. lucky if you get like one video a month. Yeah. Like at best, but it'd be like an hour long video. They do like really really long ones, but I was okay with that. Um, but I would have rather had worse yeah. like well, worse even, videos but yeah. just more frequent frequency yeah you'd rather have this uh, something more frequently than one big wallop mm. i think that's the thing so i think the, the what we're saying is you know in a swirly whirly twirly way is basically <laughs> if you believe in what you're doing is good don't don't faff about that two percent if you're 98 percent complete and you're on a time scale or a time frame that needs to be done get it, put it out just put it out it's the 80 it 20 done. submit it put it out hit render whatever the fuck it is that you're doing send in the essay you know yeah. it's really you, you've done the hard work that's the 80 20 rule i mentioned that before didn't i yes and it's like 80 percent of the effort 80 uh, percent of the result comes from 20 percent of the effort yeah and then to get that extra 20 percent requires another 80 percent of the time and effort and everything else so yeah the 80 20 rule went to as meant to apply because to overall in the year. long term of it that that is going to benefit you more is to put out or get done those jobs yeah for 80 percent rather than getting less done at 90 or 100 percent yeah exactly should we? Uh, so yeah, that was a good. We went, talk, we went we a little bit this? serious straight away. Then, I know. Didn't we? Yeah. So let's, uh, thinking, let's. We need something to to soften ourselves. Let's soften ourselves soften our souls. Yeah. I think this was we're full of barbecue. Oh yeah. So we we yeah. finish on that yeah, first really... barbecue of the year. <laughs> we ate. Oh my god! And we did a nice little belly bump, yeah. which is the celebration of any good barbecue is when two men can take their rotund tummies and touch them and go. Boop. Yeah. That's like the the cheers of the barbecue <laughs> men world. <laughs> Yeah, so I really fancied a beer actually. After I haven't had a beer in a while. Beer, You're yeah. not a yeah. I'll, no, I don't mind the fancy ones. Yeah, as in like you know, it's the hop brewed this and that, really, yeah. really punchy flavors. Yeah, but you just give me a Stella. It's going in the bin. Uh, to be honest, like if with a barbecue and like the weather nice and sunny, a nice cold lager, just a plain lager, that's completely fine. Like I, I wouldn't. I'm not just a pure lager drinker. I like other things as well. But in that situation, a nice not cold a lager, beer, yeah, nice would have been real beer. good. I did say one of my neighbours did bring me around a, 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 I want to say a stout, but it's wrong, but like a, a hoppy beer yeah, one time like when we came IPA. out for a barbecue. Some, yes, an IPA or something like that. Yeah. I did enjoy it. Yeah. I did quite enjoy it. Yeah. You know, I, although afterwards I did go and uh, pee in a bush and wear a white vest and punch a woman. Yeah. So, you know, it's got swings and roundabouts. Yeah, yeah swings standard. and roundabouts. So. <laughs> um, right, we have our glasses ready. As always, um, we have something to drink and this week is a 
Ooh, it's a walloper. Yeah. It's a, it's a from the left field, right? So we're on, we've done so many whiskies. We said we get some rums in and boy, are we getting some rums in. Yeah. It's possibly the worst named drink I've ever seen. Pusses. Pusses rum. I, unless we're saying this completely wrong. Who and says? even if we are saying it wrong, it still looks like pusses. We got yeah. this. So it's P-U-S-S-E-R. How else would it be said? Pusses. 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 Either way, it's bad. Yeah. And it's a, so we're going to say pus, pusses. 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 We're going to say it's the British Navy Pusses Rum. Gunpowder proof. Now, that means something. Yep. This is insane. Okay. I'm going to tell you the story first, and then we're going to, you're going to see the proof of it. So, this is called gunpowder proof because... So, a pusser in the Navy was the purser, which was the guy um, who was responsible for... Um, it says before the invention of the hydrometer. So, I don't... What's that? I don't know what a hydrometer is. It says, right, prior to the invention of the hydrometer, the ship's purser, or pusser, as he was called, shut down claims of watering down the sailor's daily rum. I'm guessing a hydrometer is something that maybe measured out liquid the volume. Alcohol, I don't that maybe was a distillery yeah, thing, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to measure out the alcohol. So you're telling me on a ship they had one dude that was responsible for just making make rum. It. Yeah. <laughs> that, you got to keep these fucking that, sailors happy. That is not just a tale. Rum literally fueled the naval forces. Yeah, yeah, there was literally... Post-pirate time. Yeah. It carried on. Because, and it does, it does, because it is from a while ago. Listen to this. Um, So it, they, basically, if the sailors were like, you're messing with our rum, the pusser would be like, uh, excuse me, sir. I think you'll find this shit is gunpowder proof rum. And by that, what we do is take a few, a few grains of gunpowder. They would put that in the rum and then to see, see if it would burn. So if the mixture ignited, so if the rum was basically had enough alcohol in it to ignite and burn the gunpowder, yeah. it was then decided it was justified. Yeah. So that is why it is gunpowder proof. So it's gunpowder proof. Um, if it didn't, the person might find himself tossed to the sea. Yeah. So why not? Yeah. Jesus. You fuck with our rum. You're going in the fucking drink. <laughs> no rum. Kick up the bum off the plank, mate. Yeah. Um. So the pusses remained at gunpowder strength until the daily issue was terminated. So that, uh, they were given out daily. This their job was to create daily vats of rum. Good damn. Brilliant. Uh, and it only ended on the 31st of July, 1970, known as Black Tot Day. Obviously, they didn't celebrate it. Yeah. It was yeah. like Black Death Day. Yeah. But there we go. So as I a like... result, before you say, you say this pus, pus's rum has an 54.5%. Oh, no, mate. <laughs> this is going to knock our nipples off. Yeah. Fuck. This is by far, other than absinthe, which I had a friend who brought absinthe, his father brought absinthe back from, I want to say, some Eastern Bloc place yeah. where it was not legal to be brought back. Yeah. But he was, he got it through. And this stuff, right, we must have been about, I want to say 17 or 18, because it was like high school, college times. Yeah. We lit a massive fire and um, he brought out this absinthe and you had to melt brown sugar in a spoon mm -hmm. like you're about to take heroin. Yeah. And then you would have to pour the absinthe and then quickly stir in the melted sugar then you had to put your hand over the top of the shot glass yeah because this shit was so high percentage it would evaporate yeah. if you left it open to the elements evaporate yeah. this stuff was so strong it could make you hallucinate yeah that was one of the warnings of yeah it. how insane is that yeah i remember um having it was some black absinthe that came from spain Yes, that was, uh, it was black, black yeah. absinthe or something. And that was that. like, I'm sure it was like nearly 90%. I'm sure it was around about there. It was lethal yes. stuff. It was, yeah, the same. Literally, evaporate if you don't have your hand over the shot glass. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, mate. Crazy you, stuff. Well, the only way I can say it, when I drank it, this is all I remember. You took the shot. It didn't taste of anything because your taste buds couldn't register <laughs> anything. And it literally knocked the air out of my lungs. Yeah. I used to, I had a thing for absinthe for a while as a kid, like um, oh, I think savage little. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it was because it's like aniseed, isn't it? Super super. I don't know. It's like extremely strong aniseed. Is that what it was meant to be? But then yeah, but it's almost like it I think does I like reformed my tongue. Yeah, it is so <laughs> such high percentage that it's almost like 
you know when you like you wipe something down with an alcohol wipe and you see it like evaporate from there yes but you can feel that happen to your mouth and throat like like any oils just get stripped <laughs> just from the inside of you gone. so it is it's almost like a cool it's like that hot yes. it cools you yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a very weird sensation if you've not had like a really like high percentage alcohol like that yeah. and uh it's bizarre i've got i've got I don't know whether to go into this story because yeah, it's a little bit on. it's a little bit dodgy. We started serious, so let's get on the serious <laughs> and dodgy, possibly illegal. Okay, all right. So, um, we were at my friend's. Ooh. Ooh, what was What's that? that? I don't know. Is it a little alarm? A little alarm. What's my alarm telling me? That we should be doing the podcast. Oh my god, it's time to go to bed. Is it that late? Goddamn. I have this little alarm on my phone that goes. Uh, it's that. It's not even like a. It's just more like. <laughs> um, Excuse me, sir. Hello. Just a little reminder. Um, you should be in bed by now. Do you, would, do you wouldn't mind just kind of... And it usually gets a, shut up. Yeah. Shut up, I'm, I'm watching Best of the Best. <laughs> so, shall I, uh, shall I tell this dodgy story? Yeah, can we know? just also say that you do have the hair of, of Alex from Best of the Best? Yeah, buddy. Which we just decided to fuck him into the room and everyone in the world needs to know that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've not watched you Best... You can't see right if, there. Yeah, if you've not watched Best of the Best, um, well, one, you can't be our friend, but two, um, go watch it. If you have seen it, Remember Alex when he's in his fight and he's like tied back. That's Mr. Lewis right now. So you've got you've got to I've got to go, you've got Tommy and then you're gonna go, Couch! He's gotta kill him <laughs> For some reason that's the best line in the whole film. Yeah. Tommy no Couch, he's gotta kill him And it's basically Darth Vader is their coach. Yeah, yeah he is, isn't <laughs> yeah, he? It's yeah, it's Darth Vader. Yeah. I know. And once he goes, You gotta eat, sleep and shit martial arts or something it is just the best it is the best movie shitting martial arts and then you have that bar fight scene yeah it's just one of the best and tommy lee who went on to do i think isn't he in like um mortal kombats or something he definitely went on to do best of the best two three four and five um, <laughs> which are the worst films. i've seen him in a couple of things i can't remember what though like but he's a savage athlete man. yeah he was really good um, but some of the fight scenes in that are legit, and the best part of it is it's based on true story. Yeah. When you get to the end, you're like, yeah, that happened. Yeah. yeah. Right, go on then. All Dodgy right. story. Okay. Not All jail. right. Fucking hell. Probably. So I think I was still at school at this point. I think I was 15. I'm going to unwrap the room while she's saying Yeah, yeah, keep going. So I'm pretty sure I was 15. Um, yeah, maybe even 16. It was the last couple of years at school, okay. and one of my friends, his parents were away. Always a bad move. Yeah. So we're like, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll all head over, have a drink, um, have a smoke of some <laughs> substance. You were naughty. And um, we found out that the neighbour who was, oh, yeah, it's got to have been at school. So I would, yeah, it was, <laughs> yes, I, I was 15. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were the year above us. And ah. their parents were also away. And they were, who they were who having a party. Who's these parents I leaving know. all the kids? No idea. What could possibly go wrong? We're leaving all our 15 to 17-year-old children alone in empty houses. So, actually, the mum was there at the other house. I'll, yeah, so I'll get back into that. So, um, yeah, so there was a house party next door. We didn't know any of these people, but we were like, fuck it, we're turning up, we're, we're crashing this house party um, after having a, a bit of a smoke and a bit of a drink. And I had this, I had half of this bottle left because I didn't have any other alcohol. So I had half of this bottle of absinthe. It wasn't... It was a. Where did you get the substance from? You took it my friend bought it back back from oh, Spain okay. so for it wasn't me. Right, go on. Um, and yeah, so like I I proceeded to to drink this and then went to this house party. You drank the whole thing. Half yes. thing yourself. Yeah, yeah. Half. Why didn't you it, just go to a petrol pump and it was a. Um, you savage. I don't know, I don't know what the size bottle was. It wasn't a liter bottle. It was the next one down. Whatever that is, and had half of that. Yeah, I think it might have been seven fifty. So I finished half of that and I had a bit of a smoke. I was fucked basically very v like i have a, a little bit of recollection of the night and it was very patchy um so uh, i went there and then some girl was coming on to me um very very heavily um don't really remember much of <laughs> what was going on but i know that at one point she picked like didn't literally pick me up but she like walked me into their garage yeah um which was like you could access the the garage through their kitchen um and she sensed the girth um uh, is that what it was she definitely not and i thought girthy yeah and, garage, uh, garage girth mode you <laughs> take him into the garage shut the door um and it and i think she was tr like i was barely conscious at this point i don't know she was like talking to him for ages i remember bits and i remember the mom of who lived in the house she came in because she was still there. It was like her daughter's 
birthday or something like that and yeah. she was like a cool mom oh, yeah. and like she'd open the door saw us in there and then closed the door and blocked it in and she was like she so she was like fully like i'm gonna let whatever's about to happen happen i oh, know what what's what? That's, firstly that's really strange well, well, no firstly that's rapey as fuck yeah yeah that's pr- i don't think she the- knew that i was completely trash she just like opened the door saw two people chilling in <sighs> double standards ladies yeah it double is a- standards well yeah Gosh, t- anyway taking the nothing it, nothing is. happened i don't i think that one of my friends remember no no nothing happened one of my <laughs> friends got me out of there and then an argument happened between my friends and some of the people there because we'd crashed this place and we oh, were right. kind of stealing their booze and <laughs> being a being a bunch of dicks, basically. Well, they were. I was too drunk. I was, I was, I was out of the game here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, she tried again, and then she took me upstairs. So she was stopping over there because she was like best friends with the girl who was there. And uh, I got taken upstairs, and then this is where I have a very little memory. Like I remember basically hearing loads of noise downstairs as my mate started to get into a fight. Then they <laughs> they got kicked out realized i was still there upstairs in the bedroom they <laughs> ran back in went upstairs to find me lay on the bed i was still like fully clothed one girl like so, taking her clothes off no. and another girl in bed you pulled two girls not even trying i don't know if i pulled them i don't know what happened they just she what one of them went girth and then as she was going to serve she said she gave the universal girth signal <laughs> to another girl which was basically this just a, <laughs> two, two, two hands together, making a circle, and the other girl went, oh, yeah, it's girth time. Yeah, and then I, I literally remember um, my, my, my mate Jack running up, up the stairs, <laughs> like, looking at like, what's going on, like, what the fuck, <laughs> just, like, grabbing me, because the, they were, like, kicking off downstairs again yeah, now, yeah. and then, like, pulling me down the stairs, and I just remember, like, running through the street, just, <laughs> just like, yeah, oh, I was so disorientated, yeah. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that was my, my don't, night on half a bottle of absinthe. Do drink absinthe, kids, because apparently makes you irresistible. Makes you absolutely irresistible. I don't know if I was dribbling on it. I am women. Very, yeah. yeah, I was pretty baked. That would have been the best yeah. night you never remembered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, maybe do drink absinthe. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Well, we always say don't do as we do. Yeah, definitely don't. don't do well, I was fifteen do. as well, so fuck, I didn't. Like I can't believe you. I can't believe you even like. Semi-conscious. I did. I did a whole liter of um, a whiskey, and that made me really bad. But I'll save that story for a different, <laughs> a different day. I used to do stupid shit all the time. I still do stupid shit all the time, but you know, I do less stupid shit now. Or the frequency is more spaced out, or less people find out about it. Yes, because you got yeah. smarter about it. Yes, exactly. Should we open this and <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, do some stupid shit now? Yes, let's do that. <laughs> right. Have you noticed? Uh, so I haven't wrapped it. The lid. Is sick, right? So the bottles, the bottles, are unassuming, really. It's a pretty. It's not even a really rum looking bottle. To me, it looks like a sherry bottle. Yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah. But the lid is this like almost neon blue. When I mean, obviously, oh, we forgot to mention this rum is a a dark rum, very dark, as in like Guinness level dark. Yeah, super dark. What is it spiced? Nope. So why is it so dark? It's just because uh, it's because it's got gunpowder in the. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're being patriotic we're as well because ex- this is the British Navy room. Yeah. We're gonna have some explosive toilet section. Do a pop test. If this explodes as I open it, yeah. Because, mm. mm. oh my god, it smells like nail polish remover. Really? That smell like cork. Smell me cork. Smell me cork. Oh fuck! Me. <laughs> it's bad, that isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Dress sniffing. Yeah, I, I don't. I've got a feeling we're not going to enjoy this. I think oh this, no, I the think sniff. This oh. If you smell it from the bottle, it's actually quite aromatic. Actually, yeah, you're yeah, right. that's not so bad. Go on then, give yours a pour. You, you can oh. do it. You brought this one, so you get the first pour. Oh, it's oh, a good noise. That again, though, is a non-glugger, so this is dangerous. If you get a glugger, you're okay, you see, because it limits like your pour. But these, when they come out like just a tap, you've gone deep as well, mate. That's like oh, a oh, double. Fuck yeah, so at least a double. Balls deep on this. Here we go. I'll, I'll match you. It's not as dark. Well, once as... you pour it, it goes quite nice and golden. Almost bronze. Mm. Mm. We've not had one this colour. We have not. Well, we have the... This is almost kind of bamboo colour. It's like that... It's yes. not dark, but it's like, like a deep goldeny colour. 
Mm. Oh, we're leaving it for a little bit. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we'll let that out. We can't leave that too long because it's such a high percentage that will destroy that ice ball. Yeah. So we have to give it like just a couple of minutes and then we'll go. Yeah. I have a funny story. Should we fill, should we fill this podcast with funny stories? I have one from uni. Yeah, and it's pretty epic. It. Yeah. Right. Oh, I shouldn't pick it up like that, should you say? This, this is an average story. So then people don't get overwhelmed. Yeah. And then you come This out is there. a shit story. <laughs> and then it'd be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It's pretty funny. So at uni, obviously, you know, like, uh, you don't have a ton of money when yeah. you're at uni so you're kind of obviously you're living off off loans or grants or whatever it is you've got and it was a Friday night and we used to have this ritual we would go down so I went to Newcastle University and you used to go down to the bottom of town and uh, there was a place called Gotham Bar which yeah that's Gotham pretty, fucking cool. pretty cool and it was a little bit gothic looking yeah. and they used to do pictures and we used to go all the rugby lads there's rugby teams now so you used to do pictures of um, Red Bull and vodka mm. so you pay a tenner Jesus. you pay a tenner and you would get something like Eight to ten shots yeah. of some cheap vodka, and they put four cans of Red Bull. Can I just like what happened? Because it always used to be vodka Red Bull, and then yeah. something happened, and then it just turned to vodka and Monster, which didn't work because Monster what? was like. When did that? Happen? It was at like Weatherspoons, and they stopped. They stopped vodka Red Bull and went to vodka and Monster, and it was just like way too really? sweet. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I miss a vodka Red Bull. I know that they tried to do a vod- uh, vodka Noco thing. Which oh, is really? huge in Sweden and places like that. It's yeah. massive, like everywhere in the yeah. Icelandic region. Yeah, you go to a nightclub, you can literally order Noco and spirits. Damn, it's a oh, fair oh, place what? that they've annihilated that market. Yeah, yeah killed it. Enough. But yeah, no, I don't know. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, it, well, it's got to be cost pricing. Red Bull must have just been too expensive. Yeah, but it, like, Out, hang on, do you get a full can of Monster when you order it? Bet you fucking don't. I don't remember. So they'll be making no, a mint off it, won't they? Because yeah, they'll probably probably just fill your glass up and they're using half a can. Yeah. But it, it just, it's not even similar tasting. Do you know no, what I mean? No. Red, it works for something. Well, although Red Bull does, right, if you drink a lot of Red Bull, can I tell you now, people, you walk around with pissy breath. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not good. Not good on the it's breath. It's not good. If you drink a lot of tea, brush your teeth. If you drink a lot of Red Bull, brush your teeth. We, it's bad. Mm. It's bad. Piss breath. Not going to get you far in life. Yeah. Anyway, people drinking piss, who knows? So, getting back to our piss breath jugs of vodka and, uh, and Red Bull for a tenner. Um, they would literally give you the jug and a straw. It was awesome. Yeah. Like was, and so we'd, we'd stay in there. And then what you used to do is you would go from there and then you'd go off on a night out. But there was a, a cross. If you've ever been to Newcastle, you know the station is like basically just across the road from the start of the bottom of town. So you would go into the station afterwards to get money out because there was cash machines in there. And then you'd head back up into town. And that's what happened. But I was there with my, there was four of us, right? There was myself, my, my uh, housemate, Ben, Another guy, a guy called, I want to say Johan was his name. He was just this mental Dutch lad who just randomly appeared in our second year of university, did loads of nut, nutball shit and then just disappeared in the third year. And just, just disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> just don't know where he went. Johan. <laughs> Johan, yeah. The legend he, of he, Johan. Just, he was just one of those really unassuming looking guys that would just all of a sudden shove a coin up his ass. Do you know what I mean? Just like the most random, yeah. horrendous stuff. And just like, Wee! okay, cool. Right, so so there's us, there's, so there's the Marcel, Ben, Johan, and then one of our other roommate at the time. Obviously, he was in first year, I do apologize. So it was first year. And then uh, Andy. Andy and Johan did not make it past the first year of university. Mm. They just savaged themselves so much that Andy joined the army. <laughs> I don't know how, because he spent most of the first year literally under a purple haze of purple haze. Fuck. Yeah, he was heavy. Like he he was a v- very wide eyed. He looked he looked like he was Hitler's like godchild. Oh. If Hitler could create one in a genetic lab, he was tall, blonde, blue eyed, yeah. like m- militant. Yeah, obviously because he went into the army at some point, but yeah. not when he was like let free. He was yeah. the exact opposite. He was absolutely unmotivated and yeah. just smoked ridiculous amounts of things. But he had hands. Like, you it, like, we literally tried this. We threw a frying pan at him. Yeah. And he just caught it. You know when those people just pick stuff out of the air? Yeah. Just anything. You yeah. could throw anything at him. Andy, ping, catch. Yeah. Like, have you got glue on your hands? Yeah. How can you do that, but you can't, like, finish an essay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. so there's four... He needs to be playing, like, fucking cricket. <laughs> yeah. He was, yeah, he's ridiculous. Uh, he had big hands. Anyway. Uh, girth. He probably, probably got. He probably drank handsome and got three women. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> he, uh, so we're getting. We're going over to the station to get. Uh, so we're one piss breath jug vodka bull thing down, mm-hmm. um, and we're all like, yeah. And we're getting cash out the machines. They're side by side, and then this train pulls up at the train station, and Ben, my mate, just looks at me, for, 
and then just smiles and just starts running towards the train. At which point, my brain did nothing but go, follow him. <laughs> so for no reason, I grabbed the money that's coming out of the cash point, start running towards the train. He jumps on it. I jump it behind him. Johan comes pelting in behind. No, did, did I make it? Did it? Maybe he didn't make it. Andy made it. Andy came pelting in behind. I think, no. It's all a bit of a haze. Did Johan make it? Were you smoking as well? One, two, three. Yes, no, he did. Yeah, so then Johan came, and then all we heard was Andy was like, wait for me, as he comes running on. So we all jump on this train, and then as it starts to move, as we've just jumped on it, I'm literally like, where the hell are we going? But Ben knew it was going to York. Yeah. So he was like, oh, York. It's going to York. I know this, that this is the train is going on. So we're like, all right, guess we're going for a night out in York. So we rock up in York. We've got nowhere to stay. We're students. Okay. And all we know is that Ben knows York. Yeah. So he takes us to, we go to a pub and then we go to this place called The Gallery. Well, we've got nowhere to stay. It's getting towards the end of the night. We've got to do something. And that was to like hound dogs and girls to yeah. get somewhere to stay. I managed to like pull this swimmer girl. Yeah. Um, don't know how, because I wasn't that smooth. Yeah. You know, like I really wasn't. I was like, uh, I just wasn't. And, um, and as well, we're quite hammered. So we're in this place. I managed to get this girl. They managed to take us back to their student little houses in York, which are freaking miles away from the centre. They're nowhere near. It's not like a walkable distance. It's miles away. Yeah. We get into their house, um, and for some reason, I don't know why, I, I'm i going upstairs with the swimmer girl, whatever, hanging out with her. Her less than attractive mate did a rooster block on me, like the biggest rooster block you've ever seen. Damn. Like full on. Like... She did everything but wear a billboard saying, I'm going to stop anything happening here. God damn. Like, unbelievable. But I stayed upstairs long enough so that by the time I came back down, Andy, Ben and Johan, right, yeah. had sellotaped an entire loaf of bread to the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> they had found an entire stash of sangria that some girl had brought back from Spain from with her parents and was saving for, which they worked 90% of their way through. Ben was pissing in the sink. Because he couldn't decide where the toilet was. And um, Johan, I think it was Johan. Yeah, Johan had, um, I want to say, was wearing someone's underwear. Like, from where, I don't know where he found it. Like, bra and pants. Oh, and, I just came downstairs and we came <laughs> So I got, got, I got blocked, cock blocked upstairs. I come downstairs to be just like, boys, this ain't happening. Like, let's um, find out what they're doing because they were making a bit of a ruckus. Yeah. And then... Um, come downstairs and obviously they've done all this the girls follow me down and they're like what the fuck are you doing like get out of our house can I get out um, and they all like a bit of a we managed to like smooth away like it's only, it's only a bit of fun yeah. like, like that and then the this the same rooster blocker <laughs> the, the rooster blocker against storming upstairs again yeah. and then with the girl I was trying to because I tried to go back upstairs whilst rooster was down there getting angry yeah. but then she's come back up like hmm. and I'm kind of blocking block 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 <laughs> <laughs> block. and um so i was like all right this is definitely not happening it's getting really late as again i go on the second time ben had found a, a uh, roll of duct tape oh, oh god yes so they, they had they absolutely not stopped rooting yeah. <laughs> so as i'm coming back up ben's coming up the stairs and he's got a look what on are these he, girls and why they got i, I don't know i don't know they got duct tape now. um so ben comes up and he's got a look on his face of duct tape and he's i'm like what are you gonna do with that he goes i don't know something <laughs> Mm. And then, but what they didn't realize, right? It was such a small hallway where the girls were in the bedrooms that their doors were ac directly across from each other in the in the upstairs. Yeah. And obviously the doors open inward, don't they? Mm. So if you duct tape one door to another door, yeah, you effectively lock them in the rooms because yeah. they can't open the doors. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. This is what we did. <laughs> We created the world's biggest duct tape spider web <laughs> from door to door to door. Then went back downstairs. We weren't really malicious or anything, but we just thought it was hilarious because we were, we were, you know, two sheets to the wind. Yeah. And this was hilarious that these girls were trying to open a door either side. Yeah. And each one was just slightly slamming the other one shut as the other one was trying to open. Yeah. Like bang, 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 bang. And we're downstairs. They, ben and that have all finished the complete sangria. They have set light to most of the bread now in the room because they were trying to make toast with a lighter. Uh, because they, never works. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> so a, and now Johan is fully clad at this point in about two pairs of bras, all the underwear he's found, and got one on his head. It, <laughs> It's at this point, right, that their third housemate comes home <laughs> who does not know or has seen any of us at this point. Yeah. She's possibly, I think she might have been at work or something. I don't know. Oh, God, poor girl. <laughs> she walks in. 
<laughs> she looks and she goes, who the hell are you? Why are you setting fire to my bread? And why have you got my pants on your head? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and at this point, we all had our pants around our ankles. Right. Just to add to, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Forgot to mention that. Don't know why. Yeah. Absolutely cannot remember. But we thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, and so we had pants around our ankles. So it's like, why have you all got no pants on? Why have you got your pants on my head? She immediately boots us out, to which we're like, yeah, we've pushed our luck here a bit far. Yeah. At this point outside, we're basically on what looks like a little bit of a housing estate, yeah. proper housing estate. Like there might be families living here and some of these might be student houses kind yeah, of yeah. thing. It started snowing. Mm -hmm. It's in like, I don't know, October, November or something like that. So it started snowing. So we come outside and it's like two and a half, two in the morning at this point. So we left the house. As far as anyone else knows, we left Gotham Town. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we told, obviously, we just left everyone who was in the bar. Yeah. At like half nine, and then according to them, never returned. Yeah. So at this point, it's half two. We um, are we going to try some of the rum? No, no, keep going. We're, you... Okay, it's there's a bit to go because it gets horrendously worse. Oh god! All right. <laughs> right. Hold on, maybe do we have a yeah, sip? Yeah, let's have a sip. So a brief interlude. Brief story. interlude. Right. Remember, so all our pants around our ankles. Johan's got a pair of underpants on his head. Well, knickers. Two pairs of bras and some other underwear. No, Ben's right burning. Ben's burning toast with a lighter, and Andy. I don't know what Andy was doing. Andy was doing something he was else. Just being I think he was, sensible. He was drinking the sangria. <laughs> Definitely wasn't being sensible. Right, we're gonna have a sip on this rum. Okay, so fifty-four point five percent, please. Jesus, here we go. Okay. Mm. Right, pack. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh that's hot. That went all the way up my nose. <laughs> oh that is hot, hot. It's not under it's not unlikable though. Mm. Oh that is hot. It's got an interesting aftertaste. <sighs> I'll have another sip. A second sip is always the one. Oh that's making my whole head hot. It's very spicy. Ooh. Oh the second sip's nice. Okay. It's now a real deep warmth that I have going all the way through my entire head. Yeah, that's surprising. I was expecting that to be. It is. It's. It's no, hot. It's that, got some kick. Make that first sip burnt my nose. Yeah, it went up my and came down my nose. The heat. I was expecting. I'm still burning. I was expecting that to like mm. just be not palatable for the entire. Do you get a bit of licorice? Yeah, it's a. Yeah. Got, it's got like a. a no, I don't. A, I don't like licorice. But what's the black stuff in? Um, the licorice bag. Licorice? Um, that's <laughs> nice. The nice style of licorice. Like soft, squidgy stuff. Yeah, there is just sort of You know that's in, between, that's in between the like pink and white squares? Oh, of ones. like licorice all sorts. Licorice all sorts. Yeah. It tastes like licorice all sorts licorice. Right? Yeah. Which I like. Yeah, it's like a, it's a slightly it's like, sweeter. So it's a sweeter kind of, what is licorice? What, what flavor? Is that aniseed? It's not aniseed, is it? It's just licorice. But it's I guess, in that family it? kind of thing. Yeah. No, it does. It, it, what quite a surprising a, taste. Yeah. It's, that's really different to any of the others we've had. Third sip. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I actually... We didn't do a chink. Oh, we did, mate. Oh, look how your ice cubes melted. Oh, it's dead. Yeah. Oh, God. Look at that. Looks like a little upside down mushroom. God, that's really eating it away. Uh -huh. That's probably my, like our brain. My... <laughs> that's what our brains are like right now. Oh, yeah. This is eating it away really weird. That's bizarre. I've not seen that. Okay, your palate gets really used to the, the kick really fast, and I'm not getting the heat as much anymore no, now. not at all. So the first few, okay. So, pusses or pusses or pusses rum, pusses. gunpowder proof. First few ones are going to knock your nasal noses off. Your nasal noses It'll will disappear. Singe your nostril hairs, Nipple, clean out your head. Yeah. Yes, it, it feels like it's singeing you. <laughs> Second one, the heat will go through your head. Third sip in, you start to lose that that over overwhelming heat, and you just get mm. this... Sweet licoricey kind of taste. Yeah. It's, it's got like a little bit of like a woody, yeah, kind of, little, but nice. I, actually, really, it's overwhelmingly licorice to my mm. at the moment. No, I really, but in a really nice way with like sweetness that. over the. There's at the moment you put it in your mouth though, it's not alcohol that you get. It's a, a, a like you said a woody sweetness. Yeah, so you can feel the heat and the burn, but it's not an overwhelming like oh this is nail polish remover. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like the vodka that you get in an Egyptian disco in, in the desert. <laughs> yeah, no. that's just, I'm actually really pleasantly surprised. When I got it, I was like, I got it just because I keep seeing it and I'm like, I'm going to have to fucking pick it up at some point. Yeah, just for the name. Just because yeah. it says gunpowder on it. Yeah. I really like that term gunpowder proof. Gunpowder proof. It's a cool yeah. way of it being like yeah. deemed suitable. Yeah. Will it make gunpowder ignite? Yeah. 
I like that. That's very cool. And the fact it's a uh, British Navy is yeah. is nice. As we, I don't think we've had a. We did have the AB Gold. That's, but it was a Jamaican rum made by a British company. Yeah, and then we had the one in Cornwall. Oh yeah, but what was um, was that? Rum? That was rum, wasn't uh, it? That was the, the uh, tin twin fin. Twin fin. Twin well, fin. The blue bottle. Yeah. Lovely bottle. Cornwall. Nice blue bottle. Very much same same types vibes. Yes. yes, it was. Right. Should we go back to you in the snow? With, oh uh, god, yeah. Okay, so we've just been kicked out. <laughs> girls, the girls come home to her housemates duct taped into their rooms, shouting, yeah. "Let us out! Let us out! Let us out!" We've all got our pants around our ankles. Johan's wearing her underwear. Ben's burning toast with the lighter. Andy's raiding the sangria and doing something inappropriate. So we get kicked out. It's starting to snow. At this point, we've got nowhere to go. It's about half two in the morning. Um, we decided, in our intellectual states because we were you know students of the university of newcastle yeah to play knock and run but you weren't allowed to pull your pants up <laughs> <laughs> so we've all got trousers around our ankles we go to three doors down yeah knock on the door bearing in mind right there was me as the smallest of all the la- no are johan we, was a bit small. are we talking about pants being down small <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, it, pa- I'm not it, part of the girth family. <laughs> we are in, you are in the snow no, at the moment. Underwear on, trousers down, oh, right, okay. pantaloons up, okay. pan- uh, trousers down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, good, good job you clarified that. Andy's like six foot two, blonde, basically looks like a German super soldier. Yeah. Ben is about... He's like Dolph Lundgren. S- <laughs> Dolph Lundgren, yeah. Um, but with... And he's not got as sharper features as Dolph. He's a much more rounder face. He looks like a face of Andy Pandy. <laughs> On Dolph Lundgren. Height of Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ben is... A Dolph pro- Pandy. <laughs> Ben's probably like six foot, six foot one, and weighs about 16 and a half stone. Mm-hmm. Then there's Johan, who's a normal human being, and me, normal human being. At uni, I was definitely a normal human being. I was only like, I don't know, 10 and a half, 11 stone at first year. I was yeah. a whippet. Um... So there's four of us, four full-grown adult men at this point. Well, yeah, we are. We're, we're adult men. Quite In physique, anyway, at least. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, legally, you are, legally, but mentally, yeah. you're not. Yes. I was knocked on this door and then ran and hid behind a bush, which can be described, at best, as a shrub. Yeah. So there's four of us giggling, squatting down behind this one bush. And from this bush emanates an entire snow footprint trail from the door to the bush very clear because it's black tarmac underneath the light dusting of snow <laughs> so this person answers the door doesn't even say anything just looks right at us and just tuts and shuts the door yeah fucking students yeah <laughs> so obviously it's not the first time that's happened no so then we decided well that was uh, not enough not a good place to hide what else can we do oh i know we're at four again we're mm. the students of a red brick university mm. Surely we should test the capabilities of the human body to be able to, whilst having trousers around ankles, slide on snow. Of course. Physics. Yeah. Physics. Yeah, of course. Nobody's tested this before. We're geniuses. Yeah, obviously. I slide. It's all good. Ben slides. It's all good. Johan slides. It's even a little cool at this point. He's surfing. He's hamming it up. He's getting his arms out of the side. Enter Andy, who can catch frying pans, but struggles to walk and navigate stairs. He's a bizarre human being. <laughs> He's all, all the coordinations up on the upper body. Only when metal flying at his face does yeah. his body come into like unison. Yeah. He runs as fast as he can with the grin on his face like a five-year-old child, jumps, first error, Yeah. jumps into the slide, slides a good three inches before both his feet go out from underneath him and he torpedoes headfirst into the cement, <laughs> into the tarmac. <laughs> Feet higher than his head. Yeah. So he's upside down, hits it, bang, on the floor. We obviously, all very concerned, yeah. run over, pants around ankles, yeah. and immediately do the known thing that is to help in that situation, which is point and go, ha! <laughs> <laughs> when Andy didn't respond, however, <laughs> right, we thought, that's probably not a good thing. Yeah. Not, not, no. Andy, wake up. Andy? Oh, Andy, Andy's not waking up. Andy's unconscious. Oh, Andy's unconscious. Oh, this hasn't happened before. Yeah. Uh, let's shake him a bit. Shook him a bit till he woke up. Yeah. He wakes up, looks around at us all and goes, what happened? You smacked your head, Andy. Yeah. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just take me back to the flat. What? Just take me back to the flat, boys. Andy, we're in York. Really funny, boys. Just take me back to the flat. 
Andy, we're not joking. Yeah. We're in York. Shut up, boys. Will you stop messing around? My head really hurts. Take me back to York. Motherfucker, he knocked the memory <laughs> out of his head of the entire... He doesn't even know we're in York anymore. He just thinks we're in Newcastle yeah. on a night out. We had to walk him two and a half miles to the nearest A&E. We got there, had a discussion with the nurse about who was the drunkest. When they decided Andy was the one who actually needed the medical attention, they got him into the room, decided he had such a bad concussion that he couldn't travel or go anywhere for the next 48 hours. Oh, fuck. We found it really hilarious to show him a spot book whilst he was in the thing. He had a memory retention span of around about three minutes. Shit. So we gave him a spot book to look at. Yeah. We were like, ha, ha, and he'd try and remember this, which he fucking couldn't after like three minutes. And then every three minutes we would go... Andy? Yeah. Yeah. You see what you've done to your face? No, boys. It's a bit of a mess, Andy. You should have a look. Up to the mirror. Oh, my God. Oh, oh Jesus. How did that happen? Don't know, Andy. You better sit down. Andy? <laughs> <laughs> See what you done to your face? <laughs> it was just like it's like memento. Have you seen that film? It memento. Was. It was a, but we amused ourselves with his pain yeah. for the entire duration. We had to wait for the nurse to come and see well, him. Fair play, though. You know, you got to make the most. Of the we situation. stank so bad of alcohol that she basically just sent us all. She was like, "Where can we go?" Well, Ben's luckily Ben's granddad lived like just outside of York, mm -hmm. so we got a taxi to his. We stayed at his for the next forty-eight hours, yeah. so that Andy was allowed to like be left on his own again or yeah. travel or whatever he wasn't allowed to drink for 48 hours or do anything so we went to um, his granddad's house where his granddad brews his own beer um, and Andy had to watch us drink out of these lovely tankards this beer for 48 hours we watched a marathon of um, oh what's the film oh The Undead you know the way he's got the boomstick he's got the chainsaw hand Evil Dead Evil Dead watched yeah. the entire series of the Evil Dead had the best times ever and then rocked back came back uh, I think it was a Sunday night on Monday morning Again, remember, we left everybody at Friday, right? <laughs> as far as they know, this is we. None of us had like mobile phone credit or anything going on. Yeah, we went back. All they do is we turn up on Monday. They're like, "What the fuck, boys? Yeah, you left at half nine on Friday. It's Monday. Where have you been?" <laughs> we're like, "Oh, we've got stories." Yeah, <laughs> it was just the best weekend I can ever remember. Oh, it was fuck. it was awesome. All because my mate Ben. Had a little cheeky smile on his face, saw a train that he knew where it was going and thought, we're getting on that. Yeah, let's fucking go for it. <laughs> That's brilliant. And that was it. So that was my one of my funny uni tales. I have a few, but we'll save some I, for when you do another I've one. got, like, that's kind of reminded me of a, 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 a concussion, a, a dual concussion story. <laughs> dual, dual one, Jesus. How, where are we at now? Hang on, I don't know what, what we do in time was. We good? Uh, yeah, we've got, like... Six minutes left on, on that one before we hit our final 30 minute stretch. So. Sorry. All right. So, this was again probably a similar time frame. I think I was around about 15 as well. Can we just say, I don't think there's going to be a point to this podcast other than just making you guys feel better on a Monday. Yeah, just with stupid our stories. Silly if you shit. Have, that we've right, done. If you have stupid stories, just let, if you're on YouTube, put them in the comments so we can read them. Just something hilarious. Just, I don't know, share it somehow, messages yeah. them in, and we'll try and pick. A funny story yes. and get the full one from you yeah but you have to if we do pick it you have to send it to us in a adrian mole style journal-esque entry <laughs> for us to read out in our best author voices yes. and we'll do it day one yes it was a sunday evening and we were making cheese toasties, oh, so, cheese toasties. yeah this uh so it was about same time i was around about 15 end of school and uh a, a large group of us all decided because I don't know why we always used to go out and get drunk wherever and we all decided we were going to have a big game of hide and seek in the local graveyard oh, at why night. was that? I don't know I have why no was, idea why was the graveyard deemed as a play area? I have no all clue all kids did it we did it yeah and it was always, but was yours next to a park? no right see ours was right next to the park yeah so it was like they're asking like, for it yeah it was like climbing frame swings roundabout swings slide graveyard dead bodies <laughs> lots of dead bodies yeah so again don't recommend it but um yeah so we all there was a good amount there was probably like 25 plus of us that all got together for the, this was like <sighs> the pinnacle yeah like everyone decided yeah okay we're gonna do this yeah mass game and um was it hide and seek or manhunt it was hide and seek what was the difference i don't really know it was manhunt where it was like one of you a couple of you were hiding and then you had teams trying to hunt you down yeah i think that was it i remember we played manhunt more than hide and seek i don't really i was pretty drunk as well i, I think I manhunt I... was you had someone on and every time they caught someone they teamed up there oh on yeah the then, hunt yes and then yeah, yeah that does ring that, well. i think that was with. oh so the, basically and it's pitch black obviously you're in a graveyard there's no lights around like you're more like quite far away from any of the streets so um 
all been drinking as well so we were all slightly intoxicated while trying to do this um and the first concussion happened before the game even started <laughs> so somebody decided to climb on top of a gravestone fell off hit their face off another gravestone oh my god split their eye open they weren't they were stay, stayed conscious but they screamed something and i still say it to this day they're like my eye and it was <laughs> and it was exactly like that genuine my eye it's genuine fear but like we all looked at him and thought fuck he's lost his eye because he split his eyebrow open and instantly just had like blood all down the side of his face so you couldn't see that one eye because oh, like blood had gone into the eye as well so it was oh, so completely redded out his eye. yeah uh, he hadn't he literally just split, split his brow right open and had to go to hospital had to get stitches had concussion that was concussion number one <laughs> yeah. Another one was a, a girl who was hiding in a tree later on, fell backwards out of the tree, landed on her head, knocked herself out, <laughs> another trip to, to hospital. See, but that is the risk of a great hiding place. Yeah. Every great hiding place is a little bit dangerous. She was like perched on it like that, like little, but then but like, like kind of just gremlin. slipped backwards <laughs> and then just like land, landed on her head. When you're kidding, you do that stuff and you think before you go up there, don't you? That might happen. Yeah. Ah whatever and then as it does happen when inevitably at some point it does you always think oh oh damn it it's happened or oh this is wrong oh i shouldn't have done it and it's as you're falling though you think that so like as you're about to smack something your last thought if you're next to me to die is you shouldn't have done this yeah this is a fucking (laughs) stupid idea yeah Yeah, so that was uh that was the two concussions within about an hour of each other and i remember there was one bit i was with one of my friends we were both hiding like about you know Four or five meters away, but yeah. it was pitch black. And I was saying to him, Kai, Kai, come on, I want to move. <laughs> and and he and he was like, What, what? And uh I was just like, I got fed up of like whispering to him. I was like, I just fucked off. And then an hour later, after the two after the other girl had got knocked out, I came back and he was still there and he was like, What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and uh, and I was like, what do you mean? What am I doing? He's like, I thought you were over there. I was like, I've been talking to you for an hour and I thought you were being a prick. <laughs> He was talking to a fucking you gravestone. You were that dedicated. Yeah, he was like talking to a gravestone <laughs> like four metres away from him for literally, it's got to be 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> he must have just been in full ninja mode. Yeah, yeah. He? Oh, that's brilliant, that dedication. So, yeah, that was, a, that was another wild night at, at school. I don't know why, but that, that story has made me remember a horrendously brilliant game. I used to pray. Pray? Play. <laughs> we should have prayed afterwards. It was ridiculous. Right, this is... I don't know if you should say this because it might give people ideas, but it was genius. I'm going to say it. I don't care. But hang on. Let me blame it on the gunpowder drink. Yeah. Mm. We're too drunk to give good advice. Honestly, I can stick that and smash that back now. Mm. No heat. How weird is it? That, honestly, was not... It was an overwhelming heat at the beginning, yeah. but not undesirable. No, no. It but was I am just getting... Spicy. Spice and licorice. Mm-hmm. And that, that lovely, like, do you know what it's similar to? The Buffalo Trace heat, where it's a warming heat. Yeah. It makes you feel almost comforted. That's, I wonder whether that's why it was like sailors went for it so much, because it's got to be like really cold, or would have yeah. been very cold. I bet it does. But it makes you feel like you're getting warmer, yeah. which is everything about being Thins cold. Thins the blood and actually mental. makes you colder. <laughs> yeah. But technically but everything it's not about helping. being cold, a lot of it's mental, isn't it? Yeah, like of course. Starts, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Oh, I like that, mate. I really like that. Mm, I can um, sip on that on an evening. Yeah. Makes me feel more manly as yeah. well. Yeah. We're growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 50-odd percent, yeah. And Easy. Say, Piss it, mate. Piss it. You make a decision to think if we're growing up after I tell you this tale. <laughs> <laughs> right? So it was called Burglar. Right? Uh-oh. <laughs> this is genius, right? So it requires at least three of you. And it's usually around your home or somewhere that you know very, very well. Yeah. So you have to pre-plan two routes. One for the burglar... And one for the chasees, okay? Mm-hmm. Or homeowners, as we betrayed them. God. <laughs> you get a bag, yeah. and a bin bag, probably not a good idea now, too thin. But something that looks like, looks like a, a, a sack yeah. of stuff. You need a bush, a big bush to hide in, outside of a house. Yeah. Then what you do, and you just, we did this on the housing estate, so cars are going past slow, because courteous, yeah. they don't want to maul down the little kids. Yeah. In the road. It's night. Yes, wait, it's night as well. This mm-hmm. is the premise of it. It's okay. So now burglar is in a bush outside the house. Okay. Or ballied up as well. 
fuck's sake. So you've got a balaclava on or hoodie, like an ET'd. You've yeah. ET'd yourself in a hoodie, right? You've got your sack full of, we found books, which is very good because they look quite bumpy and humpy. Mm-hmm. Put a jumper in there and a couple of books, puffs it out nicely, right? Car's coming down the estate, nicely, nicely, too long. Burglar bursts out of the bush in front of the car. You know, well ahead, so you know you're not going to get hit, but enough of them to notice and see you in the headlights. You go oh, down like a fucking rocket down your path. You've got your one run to go. Straight after them, around about five seconds later, two of your mates have to run out, looking like you've been sat at home. Dressing gown is an added bonus to be wearing if you can do this. You run out behind the burglar as if chasing said burglar. <laughs> this is so elaborate. <laughs> right? As knowing that they've probably stopped a car already, yeah. at which point you scream at the car, he's nicked from the garage or something along yeah. those lines. Yeah. And then, but important, this is an important fact to know. So to stop them run, ram running you down in the car, yeah. the other two guys have to be in, get out in front of the car as well and then run in front of it so yeah. that they can't speed up. So that what that usually entails is the person will get out of their car and join in the chase, yeah. which is what you want. Burglar runs said route. And at some point, you'll have a nice little slip off where you dive into a bush or somewhere like that around a corner. Yeah. The two know where you've gone, obviously, because they're chasing you. They run sprinting right past where you are yeah. into just nothingness until the other person who's trying to help them just gives up. Yeah. You wait till they're going to the distance. Burglar then runs back to the old house, yeah. sits there giggling and waits till your teammates return. <laughs> that is so fucking alive. Switch out outfits. Next person gets to get to be burglar. That's <laughs> it was a brilliant game, Fox. Like. It works so well. Yeah. You, but you you have to have a good hide like a good spot where you can dive into yeah where you can legit just run past because you might get hiding yeah <laughs> if you get fuck. the wrong guy fuck yeah but yeah it also shows those also who you pull over who are willing to really help and who are just like call the police yeah <laughs> i'm surprised no one was like get in get then, in like, you, yeah. then you're just there in their car and they're fucking good yeah, one, well that's why you need two yeah so one runs whilst the other one shouts at the car mm. and that way like you can't there's always a buffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Who Damn. thought it through? It was the best game. We used to play knock and don't run. Oh, that's just aggressive. <laughs> but it was like, you wouldn't even look at them. You'd just like awkwardly just be like, just looking down and they just, they open the door and like, what do you want? And you're just ignoring them, just like <gasps> stood on the driveway. I just thought of another one as well that we did. It was also quite horrendous. What was that? Oh, it's a still on the lines of burglar, but this was one you did in the daytime. One of you lies on the floor at least four of you surround them and pretend to be kicking them. Yeah. Like l- knocking lumps out of them as a car comes. And then as a car comes, they all leg it. Yeah. And then obviously you, yeah, your just... hopes is that this car stops and then they help you chase them down or do something. <laughs> or buy you an ice cream. For being there we go. <laughs> if you get a free ice cream out of it, it's all worth it. Yeah. Oh, we did some stuff, man. Isn't it funny how your brain just suddenly remembers these things? Mm-hmm. God, dude, loads like of weird. Being in a bush dressed as a burglar, jumping out at cars at night. Genius. Yeah. We also did a lot of fish wire stuff, you know, across like yeah. paths and things. Yeah. Mm, taking off car aerials. Yeah. With fish wire. <laughs> you might not want to let your kids listen to this if you've got no, kids in the room. No, definitely don't. <laughs> oh, but it was fun. Oh, one of the best things that we did was, um, no, I'm not going to tell that. Actually, I can't tell that. <laughs> It involves bodily harm. Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell, tell you about it. We've got a load of questions, right? Okay, like, yes. Should we, uh, should we, we start? Um, should we start going through some of these? I'll get on to, to my questions. Yeah, mate. Because uh, um, we've done separate ones this time, haven't we? Yeah. I You're thought... going to have a lot of horrendous people who know you quite well questions, aren't they? To be fair, they're all, they're weird, but then <laughs> then I ain't got no, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, okay. Why is it not working? I honestly, Instagram. Right, here we go. Okay, got them up. I put this up quite late today. Because um, I put it up and then it hadn't gone up because we were outside. And apparently if I'm not within eight eight feet of my router and have to rely on data, nothing works. It's not even loading the responses now. Oh, Instagram. Do you you're, want me to get you're, you're only worth hundreds of millions of pounds. There we go. You got some. I've got one. If Dorian Gray was turned vampire, would he be a vampire or his portrait? What? If Dorian Gray was turned vampire... Is, who's Dorian Gray? Is so he the Dor- guy from the, the sex movie? No. And, uh, no, no, no Dorian Gray is Oh, like, no, he's the guy in the act who's painting... Yeah, his he's painting killing, age he's, is... He's linked if, to his painting. Yeah, if he's, I think if he sees so, his painting... Doesn't his painting age and not him? Yeah. Yeah. 
If Dorian Yates was turned... Okay, I get you. So if Dorian Yates... If Dorian Yates... <laughs> if Dorian, Dorian Yates is... Dorian Yates was turned to vampire. <laughs> he, uh, if he Dorian Gray was turned vampire, vampire, would he be a vampire or his portrait be the vampire? He would be the vampire. Because his portrait is... Due his to portrait aging. can't be a vampire because his portrait... Would his portrait stop aging because vampires don't age? Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> I think There's I'm gonna always say, that. I'm going to say he's the portrait, and I'm going to say he becomes a vampire, and his portrait stops aging. So in essence, they both get some kind of vampiric yeah. power. Yeah, yeah, but Ooh, I he... wonder if you could. I wonder if you could um, stake him though, because he's linked to his portrait. Yeah, or if you stake, maybe he'd be an unstakable staked, vampire. Staked his portrait. You'd have to stake the portrait. I think. Yeah, yeah I think you would. Damn. Cool. Good question. I like the way your brain gave up on it real quick. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I've, I've had too much of this puss's room. I was like, who cares? I'm going to bed. Uh, have you got a good one? Um, we'll do one. We'll do tit for tat. Yeah, okay. Um, do, 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 oh, I had a couple good I've ones got one. What's your favourite oh. at-home exercise to train each part of your core, i.e. obliques, abs, etc.? I've shown you this already. It's a real quick thing. Watch my stories. I show you. I do my morning movements. Toe touches, knee raises. Um, into leg raises literally do that every day alongside vacuums and uh, it's awesome I've got something slightly less serious yes I mentioned this before um, would you rather fight Francis <laughs> Ngannou or five Mike Tysons the size of three year olds right let's clarify for people that don't know about MMA Francis Ngannou just won the heavyweight title in the UFC and he just beat uh, Stipe I can't say his last name. Miocek. Miocek. Miocek? Stipe Miocek. Miocek. Yeah. I think that's how you pronounce it. Stipe, very, very talented boxer. Very skilled artist. Yeah. He probably, Stipe was probably one of the best heavyweights they've had in a very long time. No, he's one of the the best heavyweight in history, isn't he? Officially. Yeah, officially. officially, His win win streak and his title defences. And Nganu put him on his ass like he was a middleweight. Mm -hmm. Scary, scary Nganu's a big guy. And and Stipe is a small heavyweight. Do you know, he's, he's still a, he's, he's not, a big he's guy, not but he's a not muscled heavyweight. No, he? no, not at all. He's very, very athletic, very but he moves very well. But Jesus but, uh, Christ! So anyway, yeah. So big, huge, giant. Is he African? Yeah, African, exactly. just specimen. Yeah, freak of a or human. Or five being. little three-year-old Mike Tyson's. No, well, they're, they're the size of a three-year-old, but they're still Mike Tyson. How big is a three-year-old? I have no idea. Like, but did it there? There, I reckon. It's yeah, I'd say that's about right. Just below like a waist two, two and a half foot tall. Yeah, that's gotta be. Yeah, three. You, I don't you, know. What do they do at three? I don't know. But Was you're it? definitely primed to be punched in the dick, boy. They like that's a dick. Yeah, we do. We don't. You're, you're we don't right, I'm going. I'm still going Tyson's because you can kick him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Garner don't care. Yeah, but you might. You're gonna kick in Garner. He's gonna look at you. You know, like when um, in a in a comedy movie where the big guy gets punched and they just smile. Mm. That's what Ingarno would do every time. Yeah, but you're not going to feel anything with Ingarno. He, he's, he's literally gonna just going to he's going to fucking send you shot. to the nether realm instantly. Your head's just going to come off Did your shoulders. You'd be eating soup for about a year. Yeah, at least with the three. I the think the Mike Tyson mini it, Tysons, you'd just be battered for a couple you, of weeks. You get like dead legged, and then you drop to the floor, and then they just do you they'd in. Just bite your ear off. Yeah, yeah, you'd have no ears. Right, I'm gonna go with the Tysons still. Yeah, I'm still go with it because I reckon I'm going to punch my a hole in my face. Yeah, yeah, I think like you, you would genuinely be at risk of like brain damage. Yes. Yeah, I'm taking the Tysons. No, all right. You I'm not saying I'm going to win. I'm just that's my the lesser beating. Yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It would be interesting to know like how much power that that we need more stats. Yeah, because <laughs> like if you think about it, so if he, if he's the build of a three year old, or if he's scaled down to the height, I think it's a scale down to height. Because like because then he might only be like does he fifty percent. Co- yeah, top, does he Mike maintain Tyson power? his power? Because still fifty percent of Mike Tyson power would still be some like, Yeah, still suck, yeah. especially if there's five of them. Cause, Smashing your femurs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like absolutely like <laughs> destroy, yeah, you. destroying your fucking glutes and quads. Just like pounding. <laughs> but imagine how funny his voice would be at that size. Yeah, even yeah, higher. yeah, yeah. He's really cool. <laughs> Have you heard his laugh? Yeah, he's got the greatest laugh ever because it's not what you expect to come from his yeah. body, and it's just so pure. Yeah, I love it. I love that man. I love him. He looked great when he came back. He Incredible. Looked so good. Incredible. So good. Okay, now we are re-recording. The final 20 minutes of this podcast. So if you're on YouTube, we've had a costume change because we've got gremlins. So you are now listening to this probably on either Saturday or a Sunday, which means you're also going to get another podcast in just one or two days. There you go. Happy bonuses for uh, gremlins, which we've overcome. 
we always overcome the Gremlins. Yeah. They, they, they try, but they try to we, don't, test you. we don't We don't let them. We beat them down. So we literally have looked back over the footage that we just recorded the other week for the usual Monday podcast, and we're going to re-answer the same questions that we did then. Yeah. And if you think we're actually talking about like technical Gremlins, we mean <clears throat> literal Gremlins, no, like yeah, the film. Yeah, yeah. They, come, they came in, <laughs> and they, they, press, they press the record button. They're coming back. There's one in the corner right now just staring at us, smoking a cigar. Yeah. But, and uh, he just flashed us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that you looked just in case. It was like, Am I missing I, something? I was making that a was, joke. That was I... ultimate FOMO. Yeah. Was like, oh, <laughs> to, oh, brilliant. Right. We need a little grem- we need a little gremlin action figure because oh, the amount of fucking gremlins we, we should. Have. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Yeah, make a little sit, little on, sit on a little shelf there. We're gonna and get then when we have a problem. Yes. We're gonna have a shelf of, of top five whiskies, top five rums, and yeah. then a sign, and then we'll have a lower point for animated stuff yeah a little get ourselves Wicked. a gremlin That'd be right fast. so crack on oh uh, i don't know whether or not we fit in that the um the gunpowder proof stuff is delicious i think i'm pretty I, sure we did yeah it was... we said it sometimes but i think at the end of the podcast we don't have it here now with us it's delicious it's very warming and taste has a li- we decided it had a licorice kind of kick to it yeah and so. it was like it got so much better after just a couple of sips in terms of like because it's so strong yes. we both had the concern that It'll this is gonna, your head yeah. Off. This is gonna, yeah, kill us. Absolutely, but it did not at all. right out. Yeah, it really did. Well worth a try, especially if you like that licorice kind of thing. If yeah. you really, really, really detest, and it's all sorts of licorice, not harsh licorice. Yeah, but if you detest all sorts of licorice, don't get it. Yeah, cool. Right, get back to the questions. We Questionnaires. Right. Okay. Is fasting a good thing? Yes, we decided it was a good thing. <laughs> the reason it's a good thing is because it gives you structure to the day where you're eating, and because you're giving yourself a structure. If you don't know, oh, so well, let's break it down first. Intermittent fasting, intermittent and then actual, fasting, like yeah. extended fasting, for... which we don't know what you're asking. So we're going to go intermittent is great because it makes you eat within a time block, maybe eight hour time block of each day, which you pick, and what that does is give you um, more strict eating regime, which makes you in turn look more at your food and plan your food more, and it's more that the consistency of doing that generates the results more yes. than the fact that you're actually intermittent fasting. So if you're you're getting the results because of the consistency, yeah, more than anything. Yeah, exactly. It's just a it's a it's another form of controlling yes. your calories, isn't it? Brilliant, and it is good. Yes, so we recommend that fasting as a whole, extended fasting, three day fasts. You're supposed to do every six. Yeah, months, I think one it's every like three months, or six months, months or something like that. Yeah, because uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, autophagy, autophagy. Yes, something like that. Yeah, and it's like where your body basically go through because you're not giving it nutrients. Your body goes through this process where it kind of breaks down proteins in the body, which can be like dying or damaged cells yep. like skin and whatever else and and it can massively reduce cancer risks and stuff like that so it's autophagy like spring like, clean for the body yeah pretty much yeah it um, does it too- i don't know a shitload about it but no, that's the basic deeper. principle definitely took deeper to answer it in depth but the basis of it is um it's more about cellular repair than mm-hmm. it is any kind of fat loss it's just about health and function of the body's mechanisms and um helps rid you of those like antioxidant style yeah. little buggers that are wandering around your body little interferers that mess up reactions and stop your body functioning as yeah, cleanly yeah. as it should and i think as well people especially people that train are going to be like oh shit i can't not eat for a few days i'm going to lose all my gains it doesn't necessarily happen that way too short a time period it, yeah it's games. too short and i know a youtube channel that i watch at the moment called vigorous steve uh, he started doing it on oh, no, a it's funny man. um and he coaches bodybuilders and he has some of his bodybuilders doing it yeah. And he's very, they, very, very clever. Yeah, and, and they don't lose any mass. He's done it multiple times. And yeah, it's not something to necessarily be scared of. As long as you kind of, you need to still train. You need to do, you Stimulus need to. Stimulus needs to still be. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, obviously you're not going to be training as intense. But if you if you stop training while fasting, your body is going to be more likely to, to get rid of muscle because it's not getting any stimulus to say you need to keep hold of this. Because yeah. that's, that's the yeah. reason why and your you, body if you builds did muscle. extended fasting like some people do seven to ten days mm. like you you again it's still a very short period of time in the grand scheme of things but say you were to fast for two or three weeks you're going to lose muscle mass like yeah. even if you stimulated yeah, if it because the body still needs feeding yeah. but yeah so overall uh, yes play around with the fasting i'm going to try and video and uh, vlog a three-day food fast are you good when are you going to do this because i was going to do gonna, it at the same time oh well i'm going to fast when i start my cup but this is probably going to be like that? six weeks away yeah it could do yeah. we can do that yeah we'll I'm, I'm trying to peak i want to go for a 140 bench so i'm going to stay fat until then <laughs> and then i'll uh then yeah. I'm gonna, all right I'm we'll gonna have a look at doing that together then yeah we can do a bit of a vlog we'll just it. be fucking miserable <laughs> <laughs> we'll just well, maybe we won't. Maybe it's supposed to be supposed to feel after the first i think it's like first day the second day yeah it's supposed to just feel really start feeling really good because I, I was going to book the time off from the gym because I can't be 
I can't trust myself to be around people. And I don't, I don't know how bad I'm going to be. So <laughs> I'm just that. like, don't trust my own temperament. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm going to just remove myself from it. And it, as well, also, I don't want to be under like a heavy workload because you can feel like quite lethargic in the first like day or two. Yeah, and, the first day is supposed to suck. Like yeah. the first full 24, isn't it the first 24 to 30 I'm, odd, 32 hours? I'm, night? Well, from what I've heard up to uh, like 48 up hours 48 can, so. can suck. And then it's the third day where it starts to actually get easy. Or easier, and apparently from like if you know going extended. from extended from like day three to day five, if you wanted to go that long, that's actually not too hard. Mm. Um, but I don't want to do that long. I think like for me, if I can do forty eight hours, I'll be happy. But ideally, I want to go for a three day. I don't, I don't know if this is factual. It's just something I heard, so it could just be hearsay. But I've heard that the extended fasts, if you do them regularly enough, obviously keep on top of them. They can even rid you of useless brain cells, like yes, dead, yeah, dead yeah. unfunctioning um, brain cells. Yeah. So in terms of, I mean, there's the long term, if you were to do that alongside other stuff, brain health and everything alongside. Oh, I ain't got many just impressive. there. I really I haven't. reckon a few of mine have been punched out of place and could yeah. do with getting rid of. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, I can't remember names. Yeah. Whatever part of your brain remembers names, I don't have it. Yeah. I've got a lot better. I used to be terrible at remembering names. And when I started working in the gym and we've got literally like hundreds of people that come through. So you developed a new mechanism. Yeah. What, and, what, and a trick because it was in a book called Moonwalking with Einstein. And basically like one of the things that you do anyway is as soon as you learn someone's name, use it. So hi I'm, it. hi, I'm Steve. I'm, I'm vigorous Steve. Yeah. You're right, Steve. How you doing, mate? Or like just try and get it in get a it few in. times and then it will stick in your head a lot better. Yeah. So that's a good tip. There's other things about if you tell me. yourself you're bad at something over and over again, you'll become bad at it. Yeah. And I do that all the time. Like, yeah, I can't remember names. And so you instill, don't even instill that in yeah. me, myself. So I need to stop doing that too. So there we go. I'll try and remember <laughs> more names. Cheers for that, Dave. Good reminder. Go on. Yeah. All right. And so we've got, um, <laughs> if, if you were arrested, what would your family think you were arrested for? I reckon it's either an argument that got overheated mm. or speeding. Yeah. One of the two. I, yeah. I think with me, it would be like um, assault or like GBH or some kind of, yeah. of, of it, some more basically. Or, yeah. Things. I, 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 I can see. You're definitely, yours is a fight in Tesco. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's my fucking Alpro soya protein milk, you bastard. Do you have digestive enzymes? Do you have issues with them? I do. Yeah. You don't look like you do. Lactose intolerant. You lump. You fucking prick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, go on. Next. Okay, next question. A grizzly bear versus a shark. It doesn't Who say, would win in a yeah, fight? Yeah, it does not say whether it's in water. It doesn't say anything. I'm going to say to give this a fair middle ground. Right, right, there has to be water, otherwise the shark's dead. <laughs> the bear, well, bear no, doesn't even like, need to fight. Okay, just the, walk off. Yeah, but the just shark piss is... on it and walk off. Okay, yeah, but if you were going... Would you go up to a live shark <laughs> on a beach? From behind, I would. A live shark? You'd risk Yeah, you could that. be dragging him around by the tails all the time. You'd you risk that, anything. like, fucking slapping you, like, with its fin. They're shit. Um, they're, when they're beached, they're shit. I don't know. Even I, in shallow water, they're pretty shit. I would not still get anywhere near it until it was dead, and I was very convinced it was dead. If there's a shark on a beach, I'd sit on his back and get a picture. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah. Right. And just like, with like a worst fishing rod ever, and go, look what I caught. <laughs> <laughs> like a stick and a piece of string. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so like... So, okay, so we're, we've got to be in shark body depth water, mm -hmm. minimum, because any deeper the bear's swimming, so the shark wins. Yeah. So, and in that case, I take bear. I just don't, I don't know how a bear is going to inflict enough damage on a shark. It's just going to eat, it's just going to chew its back out. Yeah, maybe. It's going to grab, paw it, it's going to get its paws. Have you seen what those paws can do? Yeah. They're ridiculous. You, we underestimate the size of a bear. True. They're it does, even uh, bigger than your brain can imagine. It doesn't even state the bear though, does it? Good, no, that one just say grizzly. Oh, Because we've bear. got another one. Then I'm going grizzly. Yeah, yeah I'm going grizzly bear on that. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah probably then. That would but make sense. Unless, they, unless, unless it's like, in water, this is this is a big way. motherfucking salmon. <laughs> just like, <laughs> yeah, that's what it do. Yeah. This salmon's got teeth. Just nomph. All right. Yeah. So uh, we got a, a bear versus a gorilla as well, but this one's not a grizzly. It just says bear. So, so can, a bear yeah. versus gorilla. So let's say it's a grizzly again. Yeah. And we're going with a gorilla now. A gorilla could rip rip your face off. Mm. They're also quite intelligent. Yeah. Bear, bit more, just all mass and. Anger. Yeah. I think though, because like there's it's blunt force with a gorilla, whereas bears less weapons. Yeah, like got claws and teeth. Have so we you could... seen a gorilla fight? Yeah, they're terrifying. Yeah. But like I don't, they, they don't bite, do they? No, they just. I, th I think they pound. like they 
do sometimes, but then that's not really it's not common, though, is it? No, I think especially when they're fighting other gorillas, I think it is just brute force and like hammering, punching, throwing. They run, don't they? And yeah. then they barrel chest each other, yeah. and then they thump. Yeah. See, so... I I could almost see a bear running away from a gorilla just from its intensity. Do you know what uh... I mean? Because like bears don't seem like they're they're aggressive, but like they're, they're also... it's not like not gorilla gr- aggressive. Yeah. No, gorillas will just fuck you up like, yeah. if you look at them wrong. Whereas a bear. Yeah, if you shout and scream at it, yeah, sometimes. You get yeah, lucky. a gorilla wouldn't give a fuck. Gorillas are too intelligent yes. for that. They're just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't care what you're doing. I'm, yeah, I can. Gorillas seeing your soul. Yeah, yeah. The so. bear's just seeing a moving thing. Yeah, but like, I think, I think a bear, if it the... goes down, bear. Mm. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think a bear could. It, it would be able to like cause more trauma, and yeah. then the bear, the gorilla would start to like bleed out or. Yeah. The muscles would literally get and torn then, and it would just yeah, struggle. Again, people, we don't know the specifics, but the bear, I'm assuming, is a big... We're talking grizzly. We're talking yeah. brown, yeah. big fuckers. Yeah. Uh, bigger than a gorilla by quite a way. Yeah, yeah, they're a lot bigger. I'm taking bear. Gorillas are like very compact, though, aren't they? Like Even though, yeah. obviously, they're not... They're, but you've got bears big. biting claws and power. Yeah, yeah, I think... I, yeah, I just even think the If a gorilla climbs trees and jumps on it, it's still not going to win. I just don't know how the bear, the gorilla, would actually get the kill. Like, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Because it's just been got, it's literally going to beat it to death. Unless like, it's a bear that's been on mushrooms and has learnt MMA. Yes. Then it comes in and gu- guillotines the bear. Yeah. Rear naked choke. Yeah. That's yeah. the only way it wins. The, yeah, the gorilla's yeah, that's like it. A, an MMA master. Yeah. Imagine, so that's the thing. Fair, a in a fair fight, the bear wins. But if it's a mushroomed up gorilla, we're going gorilla with, with a rear naked choke. <laughs> Completely legit. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, uh, one for the gym. When will day passes be back for Black Country Barbell? Um, we haven't got an exact date. We are going to be opening very soon. Um, so just let us get a handle on dealing with all of our members and making sure that we're happy, everyone's safe and comfortable. And it's going to be very soon. Like I said, probably within you know, you know, four to six weeks, we'd like to reintroduce day passes back because. You can no also one. check the volume of members coming in day to yeah. first and yeah. see what your limitations are with the yeah, COVID when, rules. Yeah, once we've got a, a baseline, um, then we'll be able to make a more educated decision because we get we used to get so many day passes in, so we just don't want it to be crazy busy and uncomfortable for mm-hmm. members and everyone involved. So we just want to, yeah, we just, just want to get a baseline. Jump there throughout, so yeah, exactly. Prioritize so that. Cool. yeah, but it, we'll put it on social media. But yeah, four six weeks somewhere about that, and we'll we'll make a solid Perfect decision for the summer weather. Exactly. Um, so this is for you, Lex. Is your clothing line for every body type or just lifters? Yeah, no, I'm not doing just lifter clothes. That's daft. Yeah. Uh, it's just going to be uh, tailored cuts. Yeah. So they'll fit to whatever size you pick that's suitable for you, but they're going to be, they're going to fit as a body is shaped regardless. Yeah. 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 There's not, not, no, they're not cut for a muscle build. They're going to be just cool cuts. You put it on, it fits you. You don't know why, but you like it. Yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> what would your last meal be if you were on death row? Right, I've got two answers to this. The one I'm going to go with, right, and I don't know if it's right, but it's every time someone says this question, the first thing that jumps into my head is Peking duck roast. You know, the Chinese yeah. deep fried duck with the little pancakes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, aromatic crispy duck. Yeah. But, and that's always jumps in my head, but <laughs> somebody did say to me once, you're wrong. I was like, how can I be wrong? That's my man. He goes, because you're going to die. I was like, that's part of the question. He goes, not if you get cereal. You just keep topping the milk up. <laughs> so he's going to yeah. leave a bite yeah. and just keep Adding. upping the milk. Yeah. Just string it, it out. Just live forever on yeah. a spoon of cereal. Yeah. Could work. I don't know whether they're Maybe it's a it. loophole they've not looked into. Maybe it is. Yeah. The cereal loophole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cereal loophole. <laughs> if you're a cereal kill, there you go. Uh, yeah. I'd go for a, I'd go for the the hottest curry that I could possibly handle, so that when I did die, oh, I clever. fucking left a mess for him. Clever. Yeah. You're going out with a vengeance. Yeah, just like oh, going you, out with you, a vindaloo. Yeah. You think you've got the fucking last laugh? Yeah, clean looking. this mess. Up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm walking, walking out to. I don't know. I'm imagining, I'm, I'm imagining like electric chair, and I'm like. Whoa. Squeaky. You're willing for death. Yeah, eating that much, yeah please. Eating that much of it, you want it ended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, just, just to be vindictive. So those are your choices: a nice meal, live forever, or take them out with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that seems a perfectly or legit way. Drink gasoline. What's your last meal? 
a liter of gasoline. Yeah. Just send the whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> Just explode. <laughs> <sighs> right um okay so this is a like cool it, it kind of doesn't give us enough information to go into it but like how to keep on track during an injury okay so we're going to assume you're hurt you can't do your movements which is like what i was like and you can uh well number one thing right here's the thing it's hurt you have to do your rehab that's that's standard don't like you're going to lose some size it's because you're going to lose glycogen in the parts you're not training but that doesn't always mean muscle loss plus anything you do lose will pop back so don't worry insanely about being hurt and concentrate more on getting fit and healthy again but easy really reduce your surplus because you're going to be moving less and training with less intensity and um just monitor your calories throughout and try and wear if you've got anything that monitors your calories make sure you know what you're burning a day and adjust your diet down to that Mm -hmm. and just sit just above maintenance because you don't want to be at maintenance because you're trying to heal yeah, you, you definitely want, don't want to be. In a you deficit. want to still be in a little bit of a surplus, yeah. like um, not a massive one, because obviously no, maybe you don't 200 want to, calories over. Yeah, you don't want to play. be excessively gaining weight, but you want to be in an like when you're in a calorie surplus, 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 surplus. You're in an anabolic state that so you you know your training's reduced, so you want to at least maximize the you know the the, the recovery stimulus. side yeah, of things, nutritional stimulus. So yeah, and then uh, also just do what you can do that you wouldn't normally do yeah. so like say you couldn't do any bench press say you couldn't do any lifting because you damaged your shoulders or something mm-hmm. i had operation on both your shoulders you yeah. can't do lifting i would get super good at like running or sprints mm-hmm. or anything else outside of that i hadn't done previously yeah. and i'd start doing that yeah. i would do like shit loads of kick work on the bag yeah. and loads of things like that I'd just get super fit at something else yeah anything that doesn't hurt you and also if there is something like and if you obviously again so it depends on what your goals are, but assuming you're trying to keep as much muscle mass as possible, and you know it was something like you've had ups on both of your shoulders, and you can't squat, you can't you know. Yeah, say you're But out. if you could, if you could leg do leg extensions and leg curls and yeah. hip thrusts or whatever, if you if there's anything that you can do, do that. Yeah. Like even because some people are just like, oh, hurt my arm. Well, sometimes you can do lighter weight, in yeah. which case just do tempo training. Yeah. So like ten second negatives. Yeah. And if it's like something, you know, you've hurt one shoulder, which means that you can't kind of do any, any like pressing work with the one side, train the opposing arm. And I know this might sound weird, um, but still train the arm or the leg or whatever, the other side, um, as best you can, single leg, leg press or things yeah, like that. Yeah, where do you do um, Because there is lots of studies done on people with breaks and they actually retain more muscle mass on the, the damaged limb when they try and the opposing one because mm-hmm. how your cns works your central nervous system it's sending signals out and it doesn't clearly just send them down one pathway uh, so you will still get better like so you you'll retain more muscle than you would have yeah you're going to keep the stimulus for the body to make, make, retain what muscle is there yeah. as best as possible yeah oh, that's so, a good one yeah so even though that's it's not going to be, Learn to be it's not going to be as much it's something isn't it yeah that's so, cool that's and, good to know isn't and it? It, yeah and in that situation you're looking for every little bit yeah all those the accumulation Cherry on top bits. Of that. yeah nice cool so yeah um what else have we got uh okay so we've got five what five people living or dead would you invite to a dinner party now we did this once already and i've forgotten who i said but i know i remember regretting one decision because we said other people afterwards and i was like oh damn it yeah it's better yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll go first. <laughs> Mr. Lewis just whispered the guy I was supposed to be back. So originally, I think I said, I said Arnie, I said Stallone, mm-hmm. then Alan Watts, mm-hmm. because, you know, Arnie and Stallone heroes, Alan Watts, just the way his brain works and functions, he'd be a delight to talk to. Yeah. Um, Axel Rose from Guns N' Roses because a childhood hero and yeah. I just think like his stories will be insane. Imagine hearing about the groupie and the groupie yeah. stories and trashing of hotel rooms and yeah. you know, he killed a dog once. God damn. Yeah. Tried to attack him he killed it. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. Like they all should be dead. Yeah. Guns N Roses. And then I said there's my fifth one, Hitler. Now I know that sounds oh, yeah, bad. Yeah, there we go. But you we there was two things of it. One You've got to know what that guy was like. Like, how weird was he in real life? Yeah. Like, was he genuinely, like, did he truly believe this? Or was he just an evil fuck? Or was yeah. he just, like, he, the way his brain worked? Was it, to him, did it seem like the sensible, logical thing? Yeah. I just think, and then you're, you had a very sound idea that everyone could then just beat the shit out of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I said, oh, yeah, I said, I'd have Hitler, Hitler there as well. Yeah. And I was like, I'd have Dwayne Johnson, Stallone. Yeah. McGregor. I can't remember who won. 
Yeah, you said yeah, you said McGregor. And I was like, oh, and you said The Rock. Yeah, and I'm a see mm, I, with me with The Rock, mate. He's I'm a I'm a no on it for this one reason. Yeah. He is too on all the time. Yeah, yeah. He's too on. If you invite him, he is not allowed to advertise at the table. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. That's his yeah, rule. He's on it. He's... There's no cameras. You're not on camera. Yeah. None of this being recorded and nothing will ever be said outside the room are the rules you need to have him there. Then it's, he'd be great. It's hard to say, isn't it? Because like, obviously, you we never see him not, never not on. deliberately putting himself out there. Yeah. So is he just that good at selling or is he... Is that who he is? It's right. hard to say. It, I don't I think, think it's it a bit is. of both. Because he seems like he's a great dad and you can't, you know, he's not pitching it, fucking toys mm, to it. Mm, seems like it. Yeah, okay, you say that, but then there's the flip side. And yeah, don't get me wrong, he's by no means a bad dad, but also got enough money to sort out maybe 30 lifetimes. Yeah. Why, sir, are you on a jet plane pushing tequila, driving yourself into the ground? away for a full month or two months from your family. Mm, yeah. Zero point in him doing it. Zero reason for him to do that. So I don't, I think he struggles at home. I yeah. don't think he copes set, being set in a home environment. Yeah, no, I think he's a workaholic. Yeah, 100%. Um, like, but I don't know how good he actually would be around. Like, I don't know. A family environment. Don't ruin it for me. I, 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 I'll, I'll like the rock. Many years, anyway. Yeah, no, I don't think he's a bad guy by any means. I think he's a really genuine human being, but also I just think there is a curtain. Yeah, yeah, but there is with everyone. Yeah, but with a big one with him because he's so prolific, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. But I can't remember who who I said my last one to be. I'm just gonna be like, I'm just gonna chuck Tyson in there just to help me fuck oh, up Hitler. What a good call. Yeah, there we go. Can we have ours next door to each other? So yeah, yeah but we can. Yeah. We've got two Hitlers though. So my <laughs> yes, we've got two Hitlers. Okay, we might not win that fight. <laughs> <laughs> but so my other one was maybe maybe swap out Stallone or. Arnie for Jason Momoa. Because Who would you swap? I'm leaning towards Arnie because I think Stallone's more interesting. I would keep Stallone. Yeah, I think in his because it's now, isn't it? It's yeah, not, yeah, we're not picking an era. I'm picking the Stallone now. Yeah. Whereas I would pick early Arnie over mm. early Stallone. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually agree on that. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I think Which, that was that was a that was a good answer. We're going to do it to fuck up Hitler, <laughs> but yeah, if they if if these happen together and then there are two Hitlers, what would happen? You push them together and then they 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 never they would cease to exist because no two say the same person could exist at the same point in time in the same matter. So that's how you kill him. All right, okay. That's how you kill Thanks him. Thanks for clarifying. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I'm glad. Just in case that situation ever arises, now I know what to do. Know what Thanks, to mate. Do. Appreciate that. <laughs> okay. How often do you include conditioning in your training? Uh, right. So this is huge because you get so many people get so addicted to lifting weights. I pick it up and I put it down and I pick it up again, which is all well and good. And you can look great doing that. But if your heart and lungs and everything suck, you will lose that shape real fucking quick mm -hmm. because your body's not an efficient machine. So conditioning is super important, even if you want to look good as a bodybuilder. Yeah. Like, look at some of the best bodybuilders from like the golden era. They were all athletes, yeah, really. A lot of them. Help you had guys doing the splits on stage. They were very mobile. They all had a, like a history in like American football. Or a lot of, a, kind of stuff. a lot of them competed in like other sports as well. So they yeah. competed in like powerlifting, strongman. Sure one was a tie, a kickboxer. Yeah. Was it? I want to say no, that's wrong. Dexter was he a kickboxer before he started bodybuilding? I have no idea. I don't actually. know if that's right. I think I know that um, uh, Flex Wheeler might have been, but oh, he right. was really Flex Wheeler all the splits and everything. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, but, so yeah, conditioning. I I incorporate bag work into my routine. It was part of my shoulder rehab and stuff like that as well. Uh, and I do it at least three or four times a week. Yeah, is the goal for me at the moment. It's not, and it's definitely what, not what I'm saying. Everyone else should do, but I'm not doing anything at the moment because I don't. It's boring for me, <laughs> uh, but I was doing it at least once a week, and my conditioning was my BJJ. Yeah. And as well, like even if you're solely focused on lifting, your lifting will be better by doing more conditioning because you'll be fitter. Yeah. Your recovery from heavy strength work will be better. You'll have more capacity to handle more reps and sets yeah. in your strength. You're so basically you're, developing a yeah, better you'll be able to system more. by yeah. getting fitter and getting your heart and lungs healthy. Yeah. You're just be able to function at a higher rate for longer. Yeah. There's, Simple. There's, there's loads of like uh, studies on it now where people are actually like performing very well at both, like endurance work, conditioning work, like the in-between effectively, yeah. and then strength work. There's a guy called um, 
Alex Viada or Viata or something like that. Mm. And he's like a triathlete and like an elite level powerlifter that like deadlifts like 700 odd pounds. Jeez. And he's a tank. Like he's yeah. definitely on some sauce. Yeah. But um, either either way, like he, he's an absolute phenom and he, he, he has a lot of really good uh, research and loads of articles and I think programming to do like hybrid athlete training where you can mm. kind of do, you can perform very well at both. That is, and, I think that is the goal, be a hybrid. Yeah, and, and a big part of it as well is don't try to mash your training together. Tri give them their own dedicated space. Do your conditioning separately. Do your cardio separately. Do Separately time-wise? It doesn't that? necessarily have to be, it's like just when just somebody's like, oh, I want to do Don't go I on a do bag that. and then go lift some weights and go back to the bag. No, I think it's more like I want to do some resistance training, but I also want to do conditioning. Um, so I'm going to go on bench press and do like 60 reps. Like you're better off just dedicating some actual conditioning work uh, and actual you. strength work because yeah. you're not, if you do that, you're not going to get stronger and your conditioning is going to be subpar. Yeah. So you, you kind of just losing a lot of the benefits. You'll don't get me wrong. If you're just generally looking to get in shape, it'll be okay. No, that, but, no, that makes sense though. Why, why do it one way that's less efficient when you can all, everyone can do it the other way. Yeah. So the, yeah, the only thing it. is you have, obviously it takes a little bit more time. But yeah. And that is the thing, isn't it? But, but let's say that my weightlifting and I'm getting there, I can smash out a weightlifting session in 50 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But I train three body parts at a time, but I only do two exercises, mm -hmm. five sets per exercise. But what that means is I'm flipping from a fresh part to almost a fresh part again, because it's so fast yeah. and I'll do alternating sets as well so i won't do like two chests two something i'll do one chest one thing one thing and then cycle back around chest da, 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 da. um and it's and i can fly especially on my own headphones on nobody bothering me yeah um and i've become quite a solo trainer because of that yeah because you know, i like to keep that pace yeah but what i will do now is i'll go on the bag for eight rounds before doing my weights um and that has been partly because i can't lift heavy because my shoulder was buggered mm. so i could when i started to be able to punch again i thought right well We'll do bag work, get nice and warm, loosey goosey everything up. And I'd feel great when I went on the weights then. I just wouldn't push it. But now my shoulder's healed. Even with home training, I've I've put on me, I've put on five kilos mm. over the last two months yeah. since it's healed. Yeah. Just because I've been able to do press work again. Yeah. I'm able to do proper pull ups, I'm able to do proper push ups. I don't think I quite understood how much it was holding me back. Yeah. Like because I got so used to it being hurt. And now mm. we figured out it was a bicep tendinitis. Once we figured that out, we were able to treat it properly. Oosh. Oosh. Fixed everything. Back in back. Oosh, Oosh back over 80 kilos. Yeah. Well, 84.95 was this morning. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. You fucking unit. Oh, come on, unit again. Yeah. Yeah, so now I'm looking forward to getting back in the gym. Oh. I'm going to look stupid in the first week and then what it'll was go the question? Away. I can't even remember what the question was now. Conditioning training. Oh, yeah. Conditioning. yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, where, where have we gone? <laughs> so, no. yes, very important. 100% get on it if you're not. Yeah, I think like... You'll look better for it. Yeah, most people... Twice a week should be kind of where you're aiming for. I think. Um, that little. Yeah, I think you you can do you can definitely do more. I'm saying twice a week as like a, a, a low end. I'd say add in like hit training three times a week. Do less but more often. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't, have, it doesn't have to be hours of work. Yeah, fuck, fuck the cardio of like doing 20 40, minutes 40 or minutes so, on a treadmill. Like, fuck that. Yeah. Go do 10 minute sprints. Yeah. Go do some bag work. Yeah. Do something interesting. Make your conditioning work as fun as your lifting work, mm -hmm. and it'll be alright. I think as well when you are picking your conditioning though, if your one focus is getting stronger and solely adding on as much muscle as possible. Make sure you're picking stuff that's not going to have too much of a detrimental impact to your training sessions. So if uh, you're doing time some, it, yeah, like certain things like sled drags and sled pushes and shit like that, don't where the, a leg day. you can do it, but things like that, yeah, don't do it before a leg day. But there's certain movements like that where there's no eccentric loading which mm. is quite good because the eccentric portion of exercise is where you accumulate a lot of fatigue and a lot of the DOMS yeah. is from the eccentric portions. So mm. shit like that means that you're less likely to get like kind of DOMS that will have a have a big impact, but you're still right. going to want to avoid, you know, pick. If you, if you can go on the bag and just hammer out, which is going to be more upper body kind of fatigue, you're going to feel it in like your chest, your shoulders, your upper back and then you've got a leg day the next day that's perfect and then you're going to do some sled pushes or whatever else and then you're going to do that before an upper body day that's perfect do you know what i mean try and yeah. alternate between because cool. yeah you just don't want them to have an acute effect where your training is hindered just because you feel so, structure your work structure your workload yeah 
plan it out but trying to do something that interests you as well as you're lifting and that i think is now it you've now completed a full podcast oh. in uh only a week only took us a week to do it <laughs> yay <laughs> so i hope that you've enjoyed listening to this regardless and um, you will get another podcast in either 24 or 48 hours depending on how quick i get this one edited and up and out good luck lex <laughs> yes thank you and uh, thanks for joining in again this has been the crew cast i'm lex and i am lewis mr oh lewis. sorry yeah i'm mr lewis i keep forgetting <laughs> <laughs> Toodle pip. Toodle pip. Toodle.